<sighs> this is ridiculous. In every way, shape, or form that you could possibly fathom in your mind's eye, this is not a good concept. First of all, one of the movies already tried the whole post-apocalyptic future. That didn't end well. It was one of the worst received movies, in my personal opinion. I don't know statistically because I didn't take the time to look up the numbers. But when you're doing a post-apocalyptic world, it doesn't work when you're trying to do two individual timelines, one when they're adolescent and then the other when they're like full-fledged adults already. It's not a good look, okay? Because there's no real mystery. We already know what's going to happen. I got to give it to them. They did it. Just when I thought that the Resident Evil franchise couldn't be put through the ringer in a worse way than the movies did initially, I was wrong. Netflix has once more proven to me that they are fully capable of taking my childhood and completely destroying it. It's pieces. Decay. Worse than the T-Virus. I can't believe they did it. <laughs> As you can tell from the title here, is this the end of Resident Evil? I think it is personally. Why? Because they seem to want to take something that we all grew up with and loved, a survival horror video game that came out in the PlayStation in 1996, Capcom. Who would have thought that Shinji Mikami, the guy that did Goof Troop uh, or Goofy Game, whatever the case may be, would create a survival horror game that tested our ability to progress and persevere in spite of everything that was going on right but it happened and you know what i thought it was fantastic i became such a big fan of the series that i even have a tattoo of the umbrella corporation on my back you can't see it obviously because i have a shirt on and for youtube let's keep it friendly so that they do not destroy my channel but with that said there has officially been confirmation that netflix is in fact and indeed creating a Resident Evil series. Now, there's been a lot of rumors in the past about how it would come out, and there was even a, a pilot for Arclane, which was supposed to be the original concept of how this game was supposed to be, not this game, I'm sorry, of how this movie was supposed to be created, right? But with that said, I'm gonna read the article here because in this article, I'm gonna give you the general synopsis on what we're actually dealing with here and why I highly disagree with this and why I highly dislike this. Okay, so let's just let's just get into this garbage, man. All right, so, <laughs> all right. In the first timeline, 14-year-old sisters, Jade and Billy Wesker are moved to new Raccoon City. Now, first of all, all right. Let's forget about the fact that Wesker already has a kid who is Jake. He premiered in Resident Evil 6. I thought that it was a decent game in spite of a lot of people not liking it. That's okay, you know, to each their own. And realistically, I have no issue with the protagonist being unknowns. I realize that that's a thing. Even though the movies already tried that with Alice, you know, at least let me not even defend it. I'm not going to defend it in any way, shape or form. Okay. The fact that one of the kids is called Billy also bothers me because Billy was actually a character in Resident Evil Zero and you never hear from him again. You have no idea where he is. We don't know if he killed himself, which was kind of implied towards the end of that game as Rebecca works her way to the Spencer estate, right? But now they're naming a character after him. So I guess that's his spiritual successor, whatever the case may be, I don't know. And then New Raccoon City. Let's talk about that for a second. In Resident Evil 3, Nemesis, they end up nuking Raccoon City because the infection got so out of control that the U.S. Army decided that it was time to employ a nuclear assault in order to purge the world of this infestation that would inevitably spread throughout the, the entire world and cause more chaos, right? So that ends up happening. And now you name a new city, New Raccoon. Now, let's forget about the fact that New Raccoon City is not a thing in the series whatsoever, okay? It's not a thing. 
they already tried that in Revelations. They had this city that got destroyed by this like satellite and whatnot. And they already tried that. They tried making that a thing. It didn't work out. All right, let's uh, let's let's keep reading here. Okay, a manufactured corporate town forced on them right as adolescence is in full swing. So they're kids. They're kids on top of that. These are these are children, right? But the more time they spend there, the more they come to realize that the town is more than it seems and their father may be concealing dark secrets. Ooh, I wonder what these dark secrets can be. I mean, let's forget about the fact that everybody knows who Wesker is, who, by the way, is one of my favorite antagonists in the entire series. But OK, let's pretend for a moment no one knows what Resident Evil is, right? We don't know what it is. This is brand new. You're witnessing this for the first time. So you don't know who Wesker is and you don't actually know the destruction that he's caused upon the world, right? The fact that they're trying to make it so mysterious, it just doesn't work because we live in a day and age of social media and the Internet where you could just do a simple Google search. Who is Wesker? Who is Albert Wesker? Who are these random children of his who nobody knows about? You know, if you Google Wesker's kids, you know who you're going to find? You're going to find Jake. OK, that's who you're going to find. You're not going to find Jade or Billy, these manufactured, invented characters for this Netflix series. That's not who you're going to find. I thought they learned their lessons with the movies already. I want to see the actual characters that I grew up with, the characters that I love. I want to see Chris. I want to see Jill, Leon, Claire, Jake, you know, Pierce, like any of these characters. Like, I want to see them. These are the characters that I actually care about and that I think everybody else that is in love with this franchise cares about. Netflix, you're going to end up disappointing a lot of people with this. I'm telling you this right now. Let's continue with this article. Okay, we're all right. Secrets that could destroy the world. Cut to the second timeline, well over a decade into the future. There are less than 15 million people left on Earth and more than 6 billion monsters, people and animals infected with the T virus. Jade, now 30, struggles to survive in this new world while the secrets from her past and her sister, her father, and herself continue to haunt her. Okay, now. <laughs> This is ridiculous in every way, shape or form that you could possibly fathom in your mind's eye. This is not a good concept. First of all, one of the movies already tried the whole post apocalyptic future that didn't end. Well, it was one of the worst received movies, in my personal opinion. And I don't know statistically because I didn't take the time to look up the numbers. But when you're doing a post apocalyptic world, it doesn't work when you're trying to do two individual timelines, one when they're adolescent and then the other when they're like full fledged adults already. It's not a good look. OK, because there's no real mystery. We already know what's going to happen. Now, granted, I will extend an olive branch. It's not to say that shows can't do that successfully, because there are plenty of shows that follow that formula where you take events that happened into the past and then you sort of wired into into the current timeline. And I agree that that's a reality and that's the thing that people do and it works. But for this particular franchise, I just don't think it works well. OK, I don't care about any of this stuff. First of all, if everybody's already destroyed, then what's left to look forward to? Like how much horror can you really create? If you're going to try to create horror, you could go to the SD Perry novels. They're fucking great. Like on some real shit, they're good, you know? Make Caliban Cove. Heck, that'd be a good storyline to see. That was one of the books that should have been made into a game that I thought would have been great. Or you could have at least attached that as some sort of DLC, which uh, further gave Rebecca's character something to do. It, it raised up her character development and her stock in the series, in my, in my opinion. And that would personally have been a better story for them to do. Or, you know, the whole arc lane thing. Heck, I'd even like to see George Trevor struggle after he created the mansion and he was trapped in it where he was trying to escape to get to his family. You know, that we all know he ends up being a crimson head and he gets locked up in that room downstairs where you require the four mask in order to, to open it up. You know, that would have been kind of cool, you know, actually make the story in the mansion or heck, look, I get it. When you're translating a, a particular media from one form to another, you're going to take creative liberties. I've always understood that I'm not ignorant and I accept that as a reality. But think of it like this. Netflix, you can do better. You have done better. As a matter of fact, you did The Witcher. OK, 
you you casted Henry Cavill, who I thought was a stiff actor, and you made me believe that he's Geralt of Rivia. Okay, I can never see another actor play that role and me take it seriously. He is a definitive Geralt in my mind, and that's who I accept as that character. So you're capable of doing these things. You know, when you're doing something like adolescence, like that type of storyline, that that fits well with something like Stranger Things because. You know, Stranger Things, it's a it's a unique show. It's starting from scratch. There's no previous history to it. You can kind of do whatever the hell you want. And then it doesn't have an alternate timeline where you're going to see the characters play off each other based off of what time period that, that they're in. Right. It's something that I personally believe should not be a focal point. Now, I'm not going to get into these talking points about them being woke or the protagonist being female. I don't care about any of that crap because realistically, Resident Evil has always been pretty open with that. Like they've had protagonists that are both male and females. So that's OK. I don't care about that. But what I do care about is you giving me unknown characters that I know nothing about. That is where you really start to drop the ball. You know, you have eight episodes for the first season that you're going to give us in one shot, which everyone's going to binge watch, including me, because let's face it, I'm going to see it. We're all going to see it in spite of how bad and how much of a train wreck this is going to end up being. It's going to be successful because we're all still going to see it just to see what happens. And you know what? If the show ends up being good, I will eat every single word of mine. OK, you will hear me making another video eating my damn words. But I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. I don't think they're capable of taking the story that has been established through the last 20 plus years and make it into something that we would all enjoy. Now, granted, you can't please everybody and I'm not expecting to be pleased in every aspect. But when you have so much source material that you could borrow from, I look back at a movie like Silent Hill, for example, the protagonist in the movie wasn't Harry Mason. It was Rose right now. It was essentially the story of the first game, but I still think they did a great job. They made me believe that I was watching a Silent Hill movie. They did the town. They even borrowed the soundtracks from the video games, and it was a well put together story. And in my opinion, it's still the best uh, video game to movie that has come out so far, you know? I understand that writing survival horror is difficult, and I think it's going to be like The Walking Dead personally, which I'm not really interested in seeing. I only ever felt that the first season of The Walking Dead was horror, and that's because the apocalypse just began. So we had to see these characters coming to terms with what was going on, and it's being told through the perspective of somebody that was in a coma while everything was going down. But you're going to have in this situation, uh, Jade and Billy they are already living through this. They already know what's going to happen. So when you're going to look at their current present time selves, they're going to know how to deal with this stuff. It's not going to be scary. It's not going to be something that they're experiencing for the first time. So there's no way that I'm going to believe or that I'll buy that it's going to be scary. I just don't think so. And you know what? If they really are Wesker's kids and they happen to take some of his power, just like Jake did, then they're going to be badasses. So there's no there's no real fear because they're going to be overpowered characters. The only way I see any real fear happening is during the first timeline when they're children before any of this starts to happen. But then again, I don't think that's going to be good either. Kids just don't fit right in these type of roles. OK, if I want to watch something with adolescents, I'm going to watch Cobra Kai and Cobra Kai is a great show, by the way. That's something where I'd want to see these adolescent characters mixed with the characters of the past to sort of create like the next generation of people that we'd be watching in this type of situation. But it doesn't work well in a survival horror scenario. OK, and I know that it seems like I'm just blabbering on here, but think about it carefully. It makes sense. All right. What's so hard about taking currently established lore and just bringing it into the present time? Like you can totally do that if they were able to make The Witcher and they're essentially doing these stories from the books that will, I'm assuming, inevitably lead up to the, the third game, then why can't you do that with Resident Evil? Those books were great and highly underrated, and it kind of sucks that they're not available for Audible because I'd love to just listen to it. But there is a YouTuber. Um, I'm going to see if I link him in the links below who actually did an Audible version 
of the books of the SD Perry novels. And he actually even put sound effects and has different voice actors. So I thought that was pretty neat. And he did a really good job. And uh, that's how I experienced the, uh, the books personally. And I thought that they were well done. You know, you were able to take the time to further develop these characters to seem silly initially, because let's face it, Resident Evil has never had smart writing. OK, so I don't expect deep and compelling stories coming out of this. The appeal always came from the survival, from putting characters in seemingly insurmountable odds that seem to overcome it in spite of everything that's happening, you know? That's where the real allure for that has always been for me personally. But if you're going to have a television series, you do at that moment have the opportunity to actually take these characters and develop them further and make them real people, not just a meme like in the first game. Because like, what are we going to get? Are these two girls going to be like Alice, essentially? Are they going to be like overpowered? Is the T-Virus going to be able to infect them? Is there any real danger? Are they going to run around doing martial arts to all these T-Virus zombies? And let me tell you something. T-Virus zombies are tough as nails, man. They're probably some of the strongest zombies in fiction, you know, because think about it like this. They were so strong that several headshots wouldn't kill them. You know, like you need to shoot them in the head several times for them to go down. And it's hard to fight them with just a knife. They're not walking dead zombies where you could just like stab them in the head with like a knife and then they're dead you know it actually takes work to to fight and destroy these beings so it would be interesting to see people that are not equipped to do this being put in those situations because let's face it the horror is not going to come from the first storyline it's going to come from the second when they're ready in the apocalypse and honestly man it's really upsetting i hate this i hate the fact that one of my favorite series one of my favorite franchises of all time has been butchered in this manner and the fact that netflix is doing it sucks even more because let's face it netflix has some good stuff now granted they've dropped the ball a ton of times but it's not to say that they're not capable of producing compelling content that we'd all like to watch because it has worked stranger things was great i thought that was fantastic now granted as the series went on a little bit it kind of straight off and it's not as good as it was in the beginning but that's just over time that's just a battle of, of attrition at this point you know it's inevitable that that's going to happen but if you're going to take the first season and it's going to be eight episodes eight episodes to me is a perfect balance towards where you can establish some lore and world building and at the same time still make it scary you can make it more suspenseful you know what type of enemies are we gonna see are we even gonna see any of the iconic characters that we've all grown to love because i'd love to see it come on now i mean wouldn't you and you know what's gonna happen right <laughs> i'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen as soon as resident evil drops on netflix Everyone is going to get on the internet. They're going to type on their little keyboards. They're going to go on Google and they're going to search Resident Evil. And then they're going to see what Resident Evil really is. Some people are going to find the movies, which is unfortunate. And some people are going to find the games. Now, for those that find the games, for those that find the novels, for those that find the, the CG animated movies, you're in for a treat. That is the real Resident Evil experience. And until Netflix, until this reboot of movies that are going to come out to show us any different, I'm not going to be impressed. I want to see what's really going to happen. Do better. Okay. And one more thing. I'm going to tell you this right now. I want the characters to actually look like the characters. If you're going to bring in Jill, Chris, Leon, Claire, any of these protagonists, I want to see them look like the actual characters. And I don't want to hear that whole, oh, well, you know, it's in a different media, so they're not going to be completely accurate to the video games. You could do it. Okay, because look at Henry Cavill as Geralt of Rivia. He looks just like him. He even talks like him. Now, that's a dude that's the truth because he's actually a fan of video games and he's a fan of the series. So he modeled his acting and the way he portrays that character to be as close to Geralt as he possibly could. I want to see the same love and admiration for these characters that I've grown up and that you've all grown up and watched throughout the course of your lives. 1996 was one of the most important years for video games when Capcom released Resident Evil. And in 2020, going into 2021 and forward, I want to see more justice done for the series that I love. But with that said, let me know what you all think. What ideas would you have for the series if you were given creative control and you were given an opportunity to basically project your thoughts onto paper so that they can make it a reality? What would you do? 
you know? With that said, if you feel that you've gained any value from the content that I'm providing and you want to see me do more videos like this in the future, please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, do the damn thing and help a brother out. Because if you don't hit that little bell icon, the YouTube gods will not let you know that I produce this content and you will not get to see more of what I have in store for all of you going forward in the future. With that said, you guys are all awesome. And don't ever, ever let anyone tell you different. Signing off.